Hello again, everyone. Moving ahead with the uh, search for a nonviolent future. Uh, we've talked about a spontaneous uprising of the nonviolence state. We've talked about someone taking a couple of days to get himself into that state, although he wasn't aware that that's why he was doing that. That's with my friend David Hartso in the lunch counter. We can go on now. Uh, page 74, I pull out a testimony from Jawaharlal Nehru, long before he became Prime Minister of India, when he was in the SALT campaign, and uh, he was being badly beaten with these uh, bamboo lathis. It was a tremendous hammering. Quoting from him, I'm on the bottom of page 74. I felt half blinded with the blows. I thought how easy it would be to pull down the police officer in front of me from his horse and to mount up myself. And now here's the phrase which I put in italics and the reason that I pulled out this testimony of his. He says, but long training and discipline held. Now they had been training for years uh, for these moments. And uh, it was very interesting the way it worked in India. You had a cadre of some 75 people who had lived with Gandhi at the ashram. Every minute of the day was training for them to be able to uh, resist this kind of abuse without fighting back. Uh, and then you had up to maybe a couple hundred thousand people who were following them, who had not had that kind of training before, but because they were close into those people and trusted them and were following their uh, guidelines, they were able to maintain just about perfect nonviolent discipline. It had taken Gandhi 15 years to get the Indian people up to that point. Uh, I think it's poignant for us to think about this now because uh, very often when we have nonviolent uh, demonstrations, there are people who come there who are not nonviolent and feel they have every right to break their windows or burn their trash cans or whatever they want to do. They use this euphemism, which I think is a bit dishonest, that what they're doing is diversity of tactics. I don't think it's diversity. I think it's an opposite. And I don't think it's just a tactic. I think it's a completely different mental state and a completely different kind of energy. But be that as it may, it is useful and interesting for us to observe that it took 15 years of rigorous training by a core group who had a good rapport with the masses in order to pull off a really large scale, long term, completely nonviolent movement. And when they did, they were free. Uh, the Salt Satyagraha is universally acknowledged to be the turning point for India's freedom struggle. After that, and as it just happens, there was an American journalist reporting it in just those terms. Uh, Webb Miller was his name, phoning back to the Chicago Tribune that it, it's over. Uh, it, it, we cannot go, the West cannot maintain any kind of moral ascendancy over India anymore. So you see what a tremendous historical uh, shift took place because of those changes that originate within an individual, built up through training, made part of a consistent style of living among enough people that it could generate a whole display or what Gandhi himself called an ocular demonstration of what nonviolent power could be. So uh, today in the Meta Center, we have developed a system called the Roadmap if you go to our website and just look at the roadmap tab, you'll find it very easily. And inside that circle, we have five suggestions that we make uh, that are for an individual to train him or herself to participate in this nonviolent revolution. So I hope that you find this as intriguing as I am at the moment and uh, to be continued in our next conversation.